and hello and welcome to Life Beats Radio and I am your host Dawn Mack. So very glad to be here with you on this Monday evening. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend and that your day was um, a great day despite the fact it was Monday. But you know, hey, we have to look on the bright side, right? The fact that we woke up and were able to start a new new week uh, and that God gave us that is certainly a blessing in itself, even though many of us dread Mondays. But um, thankfully and hopefully your Monday went very well. I know mine did, and I'm so glad it's Monday because our guest this evening... Uh, I've been very excited to speak with um, ever since I knew he was going to be on our show. Um, He has done a lot of incredible things uh, in the world of Christian music. And, I mean, it is just amazing the things that he has done. Uh, To give you a little background, he is a popular singer and songwriter and a worship leader. And he's best known to millions as the composer behind Lifeway's Vacation Bible School's Most Beloved Songs. And LifeWay officials estimate more than 46 million people throughout the world have sung the songs he has written and composed. And, you know, when I think about that, I think about all the many years that my children attended Bible school, that I taught Bible school, and to think that we were probably singing songs that this gentleman has composed. And it just blows my mind to think how small a world we live in. He has just recently uh, released a brand new book called It's All True, Walking by Faith in a Funky World. And I would love to welcome aboard tonight our guest, Mr. Jeff Slaughter. Hello. (laughs) Hey, Don. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for being our special guest. You have been so Uh, busy. I'm just thankful that you could be here. Well, I'm grateful to get to be here. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Well, I'm going to preface this interview by saying, because we didn't get a chance to chat before we went live, BTR, Block Talk Radio, is having a few audio issues tonight, so if you suddenly okay. hear me garbling or cutting out, <laughs> it's really not me or my, con- you know, my headset. It is, it is right. their audio, they're having some technical difficulties they've been working on since mid-afternoon, okay. say about 3 or 4 o'clock. So I'm just kind of letting you know. Um, hopefully, sure. okay. uh, the good Lord will get us through this, and uh, we will right. not have will any problems. Just con- connect, correct all those issues. Jesus, man. <laughs> That is so true. That's so true. That's well, thank right. you, thank you again for being here. And I'm, as I was saying in the intro, intro, I, I'm just, it just blew my mind when I found out that you were the actual composer of so many of the Vacation Bible School songs. When I think about all those years when my children were small, they're not anymore, yeah. but. When they were right. small and attending Bible school, and I would teach Bible school, and you know we would sing those songs throughout the week, and I and you know it yeah. was like an epiphany for me. I was like, wow, you know this is really uh, cool. Um, well, so, I have to, I have loved it. It's been one of the sweetest gifts the Lord's given me to get to be a part of that all these years. And you know it's one of those things that you never, you know, I, when I moved to Nashville and went to Belmont University and wanted to get into music, that wasn't anything I thought I would be doing. But it's so cool how the Lord will just kind of hone you into this place that he made for you. And once you get there and kind of, you know, start experiencing it, it's like, oh, my gosh, this is what I was made to do, and you just love it. And that's what happened with that, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, and and quite honestly, it is amazing. When God decides he wants to use us for his will right. and purpose, Sometimes we can get carried on a journey that we never expected to, you know, a road um, that we ever expected to travel. And right. it is, And then, you know, and, and because of we didn't know it, it, I guess there's no, there can be no uncertainty because you don't know what you're about to get yourself into. That's right, that's right. Yeah. It. And, and so I think you can kind of go through it with a lot more openness than you can if, if you think that there is a possibility that your plans can get shifted. Um, that's right. <laughs> And I think that's why he tells us, stay in today. Don't worry about tomorrow because he's got it. And if we knew tomorrow, it would drive us crazy. You know, you, so many things that I've walked through. If anybody had told me, you're going to have to walk through this eventually, I, I, I would think I couldn't have done it. I can't do that. I can't do that. But if we focus on today and just seek him in today, you know, let him build in us the things that we need for the next, for the future, then when we get there, you know, his grace is sufficient for us. And, you know, that's what it's a lot. A lot is in the book, um, just stories about how, the Lord's grace sustains and and you know, He equips us to do the things He He calls us to do. You know. Mhm. Most definitely. Well, yeah. I, I 
I have to congratulate you on your success because you've you've made lots of children happy through the years with you know the many songs that you've composed and and I'm sure that you know far exceeded your your expectations as you went into that all those years ago yeah. and and yeah. to think that you yeah. know 47 46 million people later have heard or sang your songs that's just incredible I know it and I um like I guess about two years ago, I was in the bed. It was about 6 o'clock in the morning, and a buddy of mine called me. He was in Africa. He was in Ghana. And um, he said, I know you're asleep, but you've got to hear this. He said, I walked into this little village, and um, he was filming some things for compassion. And um, But he walked into this one home, and they were having, like, a devotional time. Mm-hmm. And they had one of the videos from my BBS from a one called Outrigger Island. And... Um, he held the phone out. He said, listen. He didn't tell me what it was. He said, just listen. And it was all these little African voices singing, I know my God is real, and nothing will change how I feel. I give him my worship, and I always will, because I know my God is real. And I laid the bed just crying and crying. Oh, wow. Lord, you know, you didn't have to let me know that, but you mm-hmm. did. You so, the Lord is so sweet to let me, you know, in on the fact that, in this little remote place in Ghana, Africa, there was a group of children singing that they knew he was real. And I just, you know, those things that you blow your mind of how intimately the Lord knows us and how intimately he cares about us. Mm. So true. And and the fact yeah. that he is all-powerful and not only right. all-knowing, but he, he had the plan in place, and all he wanted right. you to be was the vehicle and the instrument to carry it out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and he knew that those little children would, would hear those songs and learn those words and sing. And yeah. uh, But you didn't know. I mean, I think that's the beauty of, of, his, of his plans in our lives and we carrying them out because we don't ever know who it's going to affect, who it's going to touch. And right. the magnitude of of God's greatness, and not only being poured upon us, but as we are pouring it upon others through carrying out His work, it's it's just amazing. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. incredible. And sometimes that's why he, you know the only the good that comes out of certain situations we walk through is just that we can we can encourage other people in those situations. You know, and we can empathize with them. And you know, like in the book, there's a lot of stories. There's some really funny ones and some really tragic ones. It's kind of a roller coaster. But, you know, if you don't know pain, you don't know how to have compassion for it, really. And I, that's one thing I've learned so many times. You go, Lord, why do, I have to, why do I have to walk through this? Why did this person have to pass? Why did this tragedy have to happen? But, you know, he's always, you know, his promise to us is that it's always for good. And I know that through mine, it's given me a deeper place to minister to, even with children. You know, because before my parents passed away, I didn't know how to, True. I mean, I could feel badly for someone. I could try to empathize with them. But until I walked the road, I didn't know how to have com- true compassion. And mm-hmm. I've met so many children through the years who have lost their parents. And I just, you know, I try my best to encourage them And because I, I couldn't imagine being their age. You know, I was an adult when I lost my parents. Mm-hmm. You know, so many of them. And I'll tell them so many times, you know, I believe that the Lord only allows certain people, very special people, to walk through something like that at a young age. I feel like he's getting you ready really early because his plans for you, the big things are going to start coming early in your life, and you've got to be ready. And Mm -hmm. for us to, you know, and he says we're blessed if we know suffering because he knew it. And, you know, it it really strengthens us. It draws us closer to him. And we learn deeper levels of grace that we would have never known any other way. You know, Jeff, it's it's almost like you're speaking directly to me this evening because um, just a little over two years ago, I lost my my boyfriend of two years unexpectedly. Really? I mean, he wow. was yeah, he was he was 47 and he had a heart condition, but what he died from was an undiagnosed um, heart ailment that was not detected. He wasn't having any symptoms. He died in his wow. sleep. So it, you know, wow. what a way to pass. You know, to be right, received yeah. into God's glory is in your sleep. Right. And it really, you know, I mean, we had all these plans, you know, we were making for our future together. And it really did, you know, bring me to my knees in in ways like never before because it is so true what you say. And that is, um, you know, everything God does for us is is for our good. And even though at that particular time in my life, I was just, why God? And, you know, where is the good in this? I I mean, you know, I, I was 
confident in God in knowing that there would be some good to come from, and I just didn't know what that would be. Mm-hmm. And 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 in that most difficult moment, you really can't see it. Um, it takes time and and to travel down the road a little bit with God to understand his plans and where he wants you to be. Um, right. And sometimes he does the unthinkable, you know, um, almost to, to get you prepared. And so um, that was quite a journey, but it is so true. And, and it, the yeah. compassion I have for people who have lost, you know, significant others, husbands, children. I mean, I've felt that pain now, so I understand right. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a spouse, a boyfriend, or a child. That pain in those initial moments, if it's unexpected, is going to be the same. And so I now have That's a right. level of compassion that I never mm-hmm. had before um, because right. I'd never walked through it. And so I'm mm-hmm. definitely better for it today because now I can meet people in their grief. I know what to say because, you know, I've been through it. And I know yeah. what not to say that they don't want to hear in that right. moment either. Exactly. You know? Yeah, because so many times people do, they get uncomfortable and they don't know how to talk to someone who's been through a tragedy. But when your heart's been broken and you walk through the the valley and the darkness, you're 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 comfortable to go up and just say, "Hey, let's talk about this." You know, and you mm-hmm. do you learn what what to say and what not to say. You know, mm-hmm. um, I never tell somebody I know what you're going through. I'll just say I walk a similar road and. Mm-hmm. You know, here's how the Lord has helped me. And, and, you know, but just in church, even this weekend I was in Florida doing an event, and there was a woman there whose daughter and her granddaughter were killed in a car accident together. Mm. You know, and I just I couldn't imagine the weight of that. You know, um, I had, you know, in the book I talk about my niece that was killed when she was 14, and I watched my sister go through losing a child. And I love Mallory, you know, like she was a child to me. But, um, you know, but I, I, I do know – a part of that, like you said, I know loss and I know grief, and it just makes you, you know, your heart yearns to just sit with them people for a minute and, and try, to, try to encourage them and love on them. And there's no quick fix for someone, but you, mm-hmm. you know, I think the Lord, you know, healing and uh, is a process um, from those, you know, from those issues and um, just giving someone, just listening to someone. I just sat listening to her talk a little while, let her cry a little bit, and. There's more, you know, each with I think with each wave of tears and sharing, you know, more layers of that are released, and mm. um, the Lord's able to get a little bit deeper and deeper into that place in our in the wounding, you know. Mhm, mhm. And and you know, and and it's interesting because recently I was having a conversation with Mary Beth Chapman about you know she and Stephen Curtis losing their daughter, and right. you know, and and she said you know the whole premise behind her book Walking uh, to See was to be able to to finally see that every day you know that we're without our loved ones we're getting a day closer to them by walking towards them in the journey that God has you right. know, laid oh, before yeah. us yeah. and that is so beautifully yeah. said I mean and and I had thought about that previously but to hear her say it just really kind of solidified for me um how you know important that is to remember you know um that all is not lost when someone dies we will see them again because they truly don't die and and it's a you know it is a journey and we have to continue on in the journey because if we stay if we stop we're going to miss the journey we're going to miss god's best you know that's right and um well i know you know i I watched both my parents pass into heaven and and it was you know it's very bittersweet but what i i really love that the lord let me see was they began to see people in heaven both of them. Mm-hmm. Like my dad, when he was about to pass, he saw his parents, and he saw a cousin of his who had drowned when they were kids and playing in the lake, and he started calling their names. And I'm like, Daddy, do you see them? And he's like, Yeah, they're right there. Mm-hmm. And then when my mother passed a few years later, she did. She saw she, the first thing she said. She looked up and said, Daddy. And I said, Mom, do you see Daddy? She said, Yeah, he's right there. And my sister oh, Vicky wow. was there. And, he said, Mom, do you see Mallory? And that was her daughter that was here. She said, she's holding your daddy's hand. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, and, and I'm looking at going, oh, Lord. You know, it was so encouraging to my spirit. Because I, you know, we know that that is true. But then to really see it. And now I knew my mother was seeing it. And I, it, it helped me to just release her and let her go. And say, mm-hmm. go, you know, well done. You know, go get oh, your yeah. reward. And, and I'll see you very soon. And, and I'll. 
you know, along for the day when I look up and I see all them again. You know. And and that is so true. Um, I've I've had that more than once. You know, that experience. My aunt passed yeah. away, and she, she. Everybody I know that I've experienced, you know, watching them pass, have all had that same. Experience yeah. and, and I have come to conclude that that is God's little nugget for us who remain yeah. Yeah. to give us that hope and that That's reassurance right. that yes, you will be reunited again. It's not your time. You've still got work mm-hmm. to do for me. That's but right. they are complete. Yeah. Their mission is complete, and they're ready to be with me. And 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 that's mm-hmm. God's way of. I mean, I don't think a lot of people really think of it that way. But that is God's blessing to us, and what a blessing to be able to mm-hmm. give our loved ones who are going to pass that last semblance of something to leave with us as they pass. It's just so right. profound, you know, and it does right. stay with you after the fact. Um, yeah. This book that you've written, um, I actually just got my copy from your publicist the other day, over the weekend, and I've started uh-huh. to kind of dig into it a little bit. And it's one uh-huh. of those reads that I'm going to tell you, Jeff, is right out of the gate, you start reading it, and you can't put it down. I love oh. the way you've written these stories. I love the way you've described them, um, your humor. Um, everything is so heartfelt, um, and I'm not really far into the book yet. I mean, this is just yeah. initial impressions of what I have oh, read, <laughs> but it's oh, so good. well done. And and I love to read books like this because they draw you in, and you really mm-hmm. want to keep reading. And I would have kept reading if I hadn't have had radio shows this weekend to do. Well, so, right. <laughs> so I, I couldn't have read while I was on air, but I would have definitely, con- you know, continued. And it's just it from what I've read so far, it is a lovely book. And, oh, um, thank and you. So, what compelled you? I mean, what made you decide you wanted to write a book? I mean, you've been writing your whole life, and um, and I guess writing for others. But what made you decide to finally put something, you know, pen to paper, you know, yeah, for your well, own good? Um, I guess. Yeah. Well, I come from a long line of storytellers. I, I used to sit at the feet of my mom and her sisters and brother, and and just listen to them tell stories. And we all have certain ones we tell. And we've all told them so many times that we all have each other's stories memorized. We could actually kind of say each other's stories while the other one say <laughs> I always get my family to be mouthing the words to tell them my stories I tell. But they're mostly like just funny ones. But uh, but I did learn like just the craft of it. And I, you know, through my life of studying Jesus, Jesus was a storyteller. He loved to share mm-hmm. stories and he taught the deepest, most profound truths and stories. And um, I've been doing ministry with children for this is my 27th year. And I, I love to tell stories um, from my life about things the Lord has done and teach them biblical truths through, you know, application through those stories. And so what happened was a few years ago I was doing a camp, and um, this, you know, it was probably about a thousand four through sixth graders there. And there was an author who came, and he had brought, brought his two boys to the camp. And he walked up to me and after a few days, and he said, hey, I love those stories that you're sharing during worship. And I'd actually gone to um, like a little track, what they call track time. In the afternoons, they have different activities the kids can do. And I'd go visit with some of them and share some more stories. And he was in one of those classes. And he said, I love this. You've got to get them down. I'm an author. And he goes, I'll help you. I'll ghostwrite with you. And I just kind of blew him off. I thought, I can't write a book. I mean, I was just, <laughs> you know, I don't have time to write a book. He would want to read my book, you know. Well, he pursued me for a year. He saw me every couple of months going, please think about this. I really, I feel strongly the Lord's telling me to keep pursuing you on doing this. Well, after a year, I started thinking about it. And then it was October of 11. He called me and he said, I have an opportunity with a literary agent in New York. Um, and he said, let's just write one chapter, submit it to this guy, and see what happens. You just never know. So we wrote a story. We wrote the second chapter of the book. It's, it's, the second chapter is actually called It's All True as well, but it's a story of me and my daddy. And, you know, I grew up in the Mississippi Delta where, um, as a as a boy, you're, you're expected to be the hunting, fishing, tobacco, spitting, football, playing, rough, <laughs> rough boy. And all, all I ever want to do is play the piano and sing. And my dad had been this big football star, and he loved to hunt and fish. And we just had nothing in common, and I... I, I felt like I was a big disappointment to him, you know, my, all of my life. And so oh. to counter, counteract that, I would just act like I hated him. I just, you know, I tell myself, you know, I, I hate him. And no, you know, I really didn't. But that's how, I didn't know how else to deal with it. And, um, but when I grew up, you know, the Lord just kind of, he took me through some different situations. And I wound up in counseling, Christian counseling. And 
over some different things that are going on. And the first thing the counselor said was, okay, well, first of all, we need to deal with this thing with your dad. And I'm like, well, I'm okay with my dad. I hate my dad. And he's like, well, <laughs> exactly. That's why we need to start right there. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, but after I went through a couple of years, I wrote Daddy a letter, and I, you know, I just said, hey, here's what's been going on all of my life. I've always felt like a disappointment to you. But in my perfect world, this is how we would get along, and I just spelled it out. And I said, if you're willing to work on it, I am. And if you're not, then we'll just keep playing the game we have all these years. But I don't want to get on the road one day and wonder what would have happened if. So it was his birthday. And I said, I couldn't think of a better gift to give you on your birthday than my open heart and honesty. Oh, wow. And um, I wrote him a song called Never Too Late for Love and sent it to him. And he was willing. And we started working on our relationship. But then after he was diagnosed with cancer, we, we went even further and when he passed, you know, I had no regrets at all. I knew I'd done everything I felt for it to tell me to do to heal that. So we we spent, Randy and I spent five hours telling that story, and we submitted it to this. Uh, we, we, we were on the phone going back and forth, and we were you know, tweaking it back and forth. And after a few days, we sent it to the literary agent, and within a month, we had this deal with Sky Horse. Well, I thought, this is some kind of scam. This happened way too easy. <laughs> it's, it's a tough problem. They're going to want me to buy a billion books. I'm not doing it. And Randy's like, it's a legit place. Look at my phone line. And it's literally, and was calling going, this is for real. I'm like, uh-uh. Oh, oh, oh. Nobody gets a deal this easy. So anyway, I, put, right. I flew him off for almost a year until September of last year. And one day I'm driving around, and I feel the Lord say, it's time. Call him up and sign the deal. So oh, wow. I called him, and I signed it, flew up there, signed a deal, and we started Randy and I started working on the rest of the book in October. We finished it in March, and it released the end of May. Oh, goodness. That is incredible. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you almost had me in tears when you were telling the story about your dad, and uh, that is such a sweet story. And, and all I can think is, you know, now in hindsight, I mean, the Lord knew what was coming, even yeah. before he yeah. did, even before he did. and. To, th- to even fathom the thought, if you had not made amends, if you and your dad had not worked on your relationship. And oh, I know, yeah. So you mm-hmm. don't have to live with that burden now. I mean, you are free of that, and he is too, and he could die in peace. And, right. and what a blessing. I mean, that is yeah. and it's amazing how, again, your story is one of many where people, when we allow God and we listen to his voice and we do mm-hmm. what he says, it never yeah. fails. He never fails us, yeah. and he never leads us astray. Um, That's and then right. We have these huge aha moments and of disbelief afterwards. Like, really, I can't believe I, you know, I almost missed the boat on this. You know, yeah. if I yeah. had been listening, I would have. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He put so many people in my life to help me, encourage me in that way. Like when I moved to Nashville to go to Belmont University. I boarded with this elderly lady, Minerva, and she's, I mentioned her in the book, too, just a sweet, precious, godly saint that, you know, she was 73 when I moved in, and she passed when she was 87, but she was such a grandmother to me, and she was somebody in my life, first thing, like, I moved in, I lived with her for three summers while I was going to school, and almost daily, she would just encourage me, you know, Jeff, you, you really need to work on this with your daddy. She'd say, the Lord has got an amazing ministry ahead of you. I mean, this is when I was 20, 21 years old. Mm. She'd say, the Lord has got an amazing ministry ahead of you, but you're going to stand in the way of it if you do not work through this thing with your dad. Mm. And you don't let release this bitterness and this anger that you have. And, you know, I think that it's a, a situation a lot of men can deal with. It's like that father-son relationship can be such a mystery sometimes. Yeah. And, um, because men, don't, they're, they're prone not to communicate. As openly, you know, <laughs> they kind of like my dad came from that generation where he provided for us, he worked hard, he paid the bills, and my mom kind of did the rest, you know. And um, but as he got older, he, I believe, you know, things began his his perspective and his focus began to shift. And then the day he found out he had cancer, it was like he did a 180, and he became this amazingly sweet, open man who would just communicate so freely his feelings and. And to the point where one time he asked me and my mom and my sisters to come into their bedroom. He, he was, couldn't even get out of bed at that point. But he said, he went around the room and told each one of us how much he loved us, the Aww. things that he admired the most about us, how proud he was of us. And then he said, now I want you to go around the room, and I want you to say anything you need to say to me. 
could have had. I don't care how much, how difficult it may be. I don't want to leave this earth that there being anything unfinished. And I was looking at him going, my daddy is doing that. I mean, that's one of the most healthy things I've ever seen it mm-hmm. emotionally, you know. And it mm-hmm. was beautiful. We all did that. We just had this amazing time of of, of openness, you know, and honesty. And I'll mm-hmm. never forget that. And the the memory that you have of that now will be with you forever right. until you're re- yeah. reunited with yeah. him and your mom again. And right. and that is that's simply beautiful. I mean, because God not only worked in your life to restore and heal that relationship, but he also worked in your dad's life. And, right. and you know, suffice yeah. it to say, he used that cancer as a way to right. to bridge those he gaps. Used it for good. He you know, used it for good. I mean, as bad as cancer is, something good came right. out of it. And, That's um, right. and you know, and so it, 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 it was, I know you wish every day your dad, your mom and dad could still be with you, but the, the fact that they left here at peace and things are, are just, you know, we're in such a great state. Um, what better way for someone to leave this earth? You know, you right. I, you hear all the time people say, you know, I, when I die, I don't want to have any regrets about anything. I don't want to be at odds with anyone. And sometimes for some that works out, for others it doesn't. And right. um and once that happens, you know, it is too late. But the but, you know, as you were sharing that, all I could think that popped in my mind was it's never too late. It's yeah, never too right. late as long as every day that we get up. As I was saying as I was introing the show tonight, you know, it's Monday. A lot of people dread Mondays, but the fact yeah. that we were able to wake up this morning and start a brand new week and a brand new Monday is a blessing. And yeah. Yeah. And as long as we have that opportunity to wake up and breathe, we it's never too late to try and right. get right with God or get right with those that we're at odds with. I mean, you know, we're ha- we, we, we're being given that chance every chance we get, you know. That's right. New mercies every day, you know. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Please. Now, what has been most surprising about the reactions after receiving, you know, you're receiving after people have read It's All True? Well, I think the, the thing that surprised me the most is some of the people that I've heard from. You know, I, it, I've gotten some amazing emails, and I mean, I there's it's very, very honest. I mean, there's you know, there's actually a chapter in there about um, the sexual abuse that happened in my childhood, and I was very, you know, I was hesitant at first to include it, but you know, Randy, Randy Winton, who co who goes who co wrote the book with me, you know, he's one of these people. There's about two or three people in my life that know every single thing. I mean, mm-hmm. it's everything mm-hmm. that I've ever done, the, the darkest of uh, the dark. But um, but he was saying, you know, you you got to share this part of you. And so I know mean, there are a lot of people that might be surprised about that, but I know that there's so many people that have walked that road and, and need to feel like they're not alone or just hear how the Lord has been working in my life through it through the years. But just people that I may not talk to or seen in 30 years that, I didn't even I didn't even know they knew I wrote a book, but they somehow found out about it, got it, and would write me an email. And particularly one friend that I I really haven't seen since kindergarten. There's one woman. Oh wow. Yes, yeah, I mean it's been that many years, and I, I literally haven't talked to her. I don't think since we were probably six or seven years old. But we were like she was one of my first you know buddies. You know when you're little and you got your best friends. Mm-hmm. And I remember our, our moms were really good friends, but we spent a lot of time together. She sent me an email, and, and um, she's like, I'm so proud of you, and I really enjoy reading the book. But she opened up about a situation she went through, a sexual abuse situation she went through. And she said, you know, little did we realize at that age that we were both going through something like that. Mm. And what if we had what if we had opened up and said something to each other about it or, oh, or even let our, our moms know that that was happening? You know, I was, I was just flabbergasted that she – and she, she told me, she said, I've never told anyone about this. My mother doesn't even know. My husband does not know. Oh, wow. I've never told you. You're the first person that I've opened up to about this. And I said, I'm so grateful. And I, I said, you know, you brought light into it now. You you take, you you take pulled out part of the thing now. And I said, keep letting the Lord bring more light into it. And I said, share it with your husband. He's one with you. And you need to let him know. And, you know, just as the Lord quickens your heart to where you, you know, there are other places you feel like you may need to share, but but you you began a, a, a great process just by finally letting it out and not keeping it hidden in the dark. And Because uh, mm-hmm. I remember when, 
when I went through counseling with, with this man, Dr. Abney, who I love dearly, you know, I, was, I had a hard time vocalizing certain things. And he said, Jeff, you're going to realize once you finally say it, you know, because you know, even not beyond that abuse, it's just certain things in my life that I've done, I was really ashamed of or whatever, that I really hadn't told anybody. And he would say, you're going to, you, you, you've got such a power over you because you won't let it go. You're about, it's followed up in you. Let it go. If you're safe here, you're going to release it before me and the Lord. And, you know, once you bring light into it, it's going to lose a lot of that power. It's going to lose power. Mm-hmm. Over, you know? And oh, I yeah. felt it. I mean, I would feel it, you know. And then we would so many, because uh, there's one, you know, one particular, you know, we all have our high school situations. That we, <laughs> I think we do. We were young. We're like, I was young and dumb. And I was going, down the aisle, and I'm like, hold on my throat, just trying to get it out. And uh, he's like, come on now. You know, there's not anything you can tell me that I've not ever heard before. So I finally said it. And when I got through, he looked at me and went, Ooh. <laughs> 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 and then we started laughing. He said, see, knowing that better, you finally let that thing go. And it's not nearly as bad as you thought it was, you know. That's but, uh, right. Anyway, but, that's, but and I that think is that's so true. That is yeah. so true. I mean, when you think about, when we when we are held in bondage over something yeah. that we either won't tell yeah. or we've done something yeah. that we're ashamed of, I mean, yeah, is there's something very powerful about just uttering the confession or uttering the right. word, right? Um, yeah. And because it is a release, it does free us from being held in bondage to whatever it is that we're in bondage to, and right. that itself holds more power than the very thing that has power over us. Exactly. That's right. Because there's a power in our words. And when we release certain words, you know, I mean, we we have the power to bless ourselves or to curse ourselves or to mm-hmm. speak life or to speak death. And, you know, and, 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 the, and the Lord is, you know, his word says confess to one another. You know, in a safe place with someone like, with Dr. Abney, I knew I could tell him anything and it was going to stay right there. And he had wisdom, and he, he counseled me with the Word. He was a Christian. He's a Christian counselor, and he would use God's Word to to impart wisdom to me and to he'd bring that into the situation, you know. And Because, you know, but, but when you're abused as a child, I mean, you carry so much shame. And I remember sort of feeling like I was, there was something wrong with me, my body. I was ashamed of my body and different things. And he would say, yeah, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm-hmm. You know, and he, he would just beautifully bring the word into that, you know, and I was like, yeah, and, you know, there's things I needed to hear, and, and the Lord used him in such a powerful way in my life to speak those truths. And and he turned around and he's used you in an incredibly powerful way mm-hmm. on so many different levels. I mean, you had no idea that when you wrote this book and it was released and your childhood friend, you had no idea she mm-hmm. would seek you out. God right, knew that, right. though. God knew yeah. where she was yeah. and what she'd mm-hmm. been through. And to think, you know, and, and sexual abuse is one of those things that I, I feel like so many people who go through it, who are experience it and, and are victims of it, they all have that same mindset and thought process of, I can't tell anybody. I'm too ashamed. Right. And, but the, right. the very fact that you were able to help her tell you when she'd carried that with her all those years, imagine right. – the the journey of healing that she was about to begin just by being right. able to confess that to you and that is so beautiful that it just yeah. really warms my heart yeah. yeah 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 and you know it's one of the things you go Lord if it was just for that you know it's all worth it it's worth oh it. I know and I and there have been several moments where people have shared things you know that they related to in the book and and um if that's what we're called to do to encourage each other to bear one another's burdens to to bless one another, and um, I'm just, you know, somebody told me years ago, the story that we share about the great things the Lord does in our lives are like a, a fuel that he uses to light revival fire in people's hearts. And I thought, Lord, you know, the testimonies we share, that's the most powerful thing I think that we carry, you know, beyond our relationship. Our relationship with Jesus is number one, but then the story that we share about him. And, you know, when I'm with kids, I like to share, I, I tell them all the time, I'm going to tell you why I love Jesus so much. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to just preach at you and say, you need to do this, you need to do this. Right. Learn this person. I'm going to tell you why I love him. Why, and the things that he's done that show me how much he loves me. And that's, you know, that's a different way to kind of approach 
evangelizing people, you know. And because mm-hmm. when you say he did this and he did this miracle, he did these amazing things, and and they'll you know it's like we all do. We're like, well, he could do that for me too, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that's for people when we share testimonies that people are encouraged because they think, well, he could help me with this problem in my life, and uh, it encourages them to, to seek him out. And, and it, it reassures them that that. And reminds them that we're all, we're all, you know, none of us are flawless. We all have problems. Right, right. We all deal we all with things. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. And and so it's it's reassuring when you you can be reminded that that is the case, and that there is, you know, the one perfect man walked this earth thousands of years ago, and he lives within right. us this day. And and people just, you know, it, it's just um, not about who's better than who. I mean, it really does boil down to. Um, you know, you've experienced things, I've experienced things, how can we help each other, you know, right, at the end of the right. day is really what it's all about. Spur one another on, you know. Spur mm-hmm. one another on to higher places with the Lord and deeper places with the Lord. Well, um, and and spurring on, spurring on, I want to ask you before we wrap about your new adventure. Now, I understand after many years you, you left Lifeway, and at the time yes. you weren't real sure where God was going to lead you because you'd been with Lifeway for so long. And, right. and However, you are now embarking on a brand-new adventure uh, with mm-hmm. Brentwood Benson Music Publishing. And right. uh, tell right. me um, about what you're doing with Benson these days. Well, um, I actually, you know, I, I was with Lifeway for 16 years, and, you know, it was a transition. The Lord brings transitions sometimes, and we don't expect them, you know. And mm-hmm. it, yeah, but it, it can be, it was a difficult transition, because I loved what I did there. And I could feel it starting to shift it, and then they they said some new leadership take over there, and it just started happening. But it was something I could feel the Lord saying, you're holding on so tight to this that, I can't, there's no room in your hands for me to put anything else in. Let go of it, and I'll put more in your hands. Mm. And so I knew 11-1-11 was going to be a big day. I didn't realize it would be the day I'd walk away from Lifeway, but that was the day I finally said, you know, that I did. And But um, the cool thing was I, I, I have a real fascination with numbers and the, the spiritual, biblical significance of numbers because I think I know the Lord moves in that. He, there's an order to things, and, you know, Numbers mean something, you know. There's the book of numbers. You know, he he was mm-hmm. he's fascinated. He he was with that. So I I looked up sixteen. I started studying sixteen, and it's the number of achievement, and it's also the number of years it took for the four gospels to be completed, being written. And I felt Lord say, for sixteen years you've written my gospel in these songs, and that's an amazing achievement. And now let's keep going and see what's beyond. And so then. Um, I pray for the Lord to begin my new beginning on 12, 8, 11, because 12 is a number of establishment. 8 mm-hmm. is a number of new beginnings. So I'm like, Lord, establish my new beginning on 12, 8. And I love the scripture that says, you have not because you ask not. Ask and it will be given. So I'm like, Lord, I'm asking. Because mm-hmm. I didn't have anything. I didn't know where I was going to go. I put some feelers out to some companies, but no one was responding with even a no. I was getting no response at all. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, yeah, and, you know, the enemy's trying to whisper in your ear, you're done, it's over. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're in your 40s, who's going to get you to do anything with kids and stuff? And the Lord's going, listen, I got you, I got you, do not fear, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I was just trying to hold on to that. And on 12, 8, 11, I still had a message saved on my phone, but this number popped up, and it was a random number, and I just thought it was a solicitor. I didn't even answer it. And then the, they mm-hmm. left a message, and I, I just kind of thought, well, so some solicitor, I'm not listening to that. Well, two days later, it took me two days to listen to the message. <laughs> and it was the vice president of Brentwood Benson Collins saying, hey, we heard you left left, left life away. We want to go to lunch. And I'm like, what? And I was going, yeah, I'm waiting on you for two days to fix the message. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I hadn't even, even approached him. I hadn't even thought about them. And so we went to lunch, and they said, hey, we love what you do. We've always wanted to do the DS, but we thought, we said in board meetings and said, we would only do it if we could get Jeff Slaughter to do it with us. And they said, if you'll come on board, we'll do VBS with you, and if anything else, if you can dream it, we'll try to do it. And so I was just uh, wrapped up my fifth project with them in a year and a half. I've wrapped, just finished my second VBS for next year, the scavenger hunt, it's, it's called the VBS scavenger hunt, finding your place and finding my place in God's story. Which I love, you know, 
telling kids that God made you for great things. You have these gifts and talents, and you have an anointing to do something in this earth for him, and just encouraging them in that. Because so many kids, they, they think, you know, more and more that they feel like such losers that they don't look like what they see or they, you know, they get so beat up by the media, what perfect, you know, be perfect and be this and be that. And so I'm like, you know, you you look the way you look because God made you that way. You know, you have the talents you have for a certain reason. You know, because I was a kid that got made up fun of because I was a musician and, you know, people would call me sissy. But I knew always telling me even as a kid, I've given you this for something special. And so I try to tell kids that all the time. Whatever you're good at, that's something the Lord's given you, you know, pursue mm-hmm. it. But um, anyway, so that's that's what's coming out for next summer. But it's been a joy. I mean, I, it's been a, it's a whole new season. And, it, it like I said, it was a tough transition. But on this side of it, I know it's what the Lord wanted. And mm-hmm. I love Lifeway, and I bless them. And, you know, I just pray, you know, amazing, great things for them in the future, too. And I'm I'm so blessed to have gotten to partner with them, you know, for the years that I did. And God did just incredible things. And I give him glory for all of that. And, you know, but there's just times that the Lord moves us around. You know, he shifts you around. He shifted Paul and Barnabas and put them with different people. You know, it's like he mm-hmm. does things. And he just continues a great work with everybody. So, Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it is amazing. I mean, and, and if he asks you to step away from something, you know he's only going to do so if he has another plan in mind. That's because right. He, yeah. You know, it, it's kind of like our end-of-life journey. When we're end-of-life, I mean, we've completed the journey here. The same with the seasons in our life. Once we complete a season, you know, he's ready to give us the next one if we'll just let go and let him, you know. Right, um, exactly. <laughs> well, what's coming for the remainder of 2013? Well, <laughs> I'm actually working on another new project for another company that called me, and so I'm I'm driving home from the studio right now, working on it, and um, I don't know if I can say much about it. It's another kids project. I think I'm really excited about it, and um, it's even you know, with I will say this much. It's like um, focusing on different Bible characters and just kind of just a, a teaching about some heroes in the Bible. You know, just just stories that kids need to hear and. Um, because I think so many times they may hear the names of a, of a character, but they won't know much about them. And, uh, you know, I get surprised sometimes as, as I'm working with kids, things that they don't know. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'll, I'll mention someone from the Bible, and they're like, what, who? And and we just, these are things we need to know. I'm, I'm all about educating them in the things of the Lord and in his word and encouraging them to get in the word every day, you know, to spend time. And, to, you know, I'm, I say all the time, I felt the Lord say this to me. I heard the Lord say, and so many kids, Thomas kids will go, well, how do you know the Lord's talking to you? How do you hear his voice? I said, because I spend time with him, and I spend time with his word. And I said, when your mama calls you on the phone, do you have to ask who it is? Because you spend a lot of time with her. Do you know the sound of her voice? And I said, the Lord is the same way. You spend a lot of time with him, and you're going to know the sound of his voice. And you're going to know when he's talking to you. And that's just the way they can relate to it. But um, So I'm working on that, and then um, I will probably start, uh, on VBS 15 pretty soon after that, and then I'll probably do. I got a Christmas project coming up, another one. So <laughs> it kind of just right. keeps rolling. Yeah. It's, and you uh, know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask if you're going to do another book kind of in follow-up to the one you've just released or maybe a volume two with more stories? Or <laughs> you know, if, I'm open to it. If the Lord opened that door, I would love to do it. I mean, because, you know, it, it, I don't think I've ever worked on anything harder in my life than that book. There is no music project that I have ever poured into like I did that book. Because I, I was so scared there would be a mistake in it, even with proofreaders going through it at the publishing company. I would sit from 5 in the morning till midnight some days, never even get dressed, just pour into that book trying to make sure everything was correct. And I, So it was, a, it was a true labor of love, and I'm grateful to have, you know, stories that are documented in that book for – you know, for generations beyond in my family to have those down where they can read them and know about my parents, you know, and um, the things that, that they did and the things and from, you know, just a lot of wonderful stories from our family. But, um, yeah, I'm totally open. I, I, right now, I, it's like, you know, to think about doing it again, this, <laughs> it's not allowing me to think about it again, but I, 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 I'm totally, I would love to. And I, I'm kind of going, Lord, you know, it's just, 
this just gives me an opportunity for you to do some more amazing, miraculous things in my life that I can write about in the next one. So bring it on. You know, I'm ready there for more go. miracles. I love, <laughs> I believe in miracles. I see them, I see them every day. I, I feel like the Lord, he'll treat us, he'll, he'll kind of be like um, Christmas morning with us every day if we're just looking for it. You know, every day there's an opportunity for him to do miraculous things in our lives if we're aware of it, you know, and that's why I yeah. have to try to keep my eyes open that way, looking for those things for him that he's doing. And um, so, well, yes, so yes, I would love to. <laughs> well, we, I'm going to go ahead and, and say we look forward to it because, I mean, I can't imagine that not coming to pass at some point because I do believe God is not finished with you yet, and there's yeah, a lot yeah. more to be told um, coming yeah. from the death slaughter camp. So, um you're just an amazing person. You've done so many incredible things throughout your career. You've had a wonderful career. I mean, many would would look and go, wow, look at how blessed you are. I mean, you've worked with some of the most, you know, incredible talents in the world. I mean, heck, you had Amy Grant. She wrote the forward in your book. I mean, how <laughs> cool is that, you know? Yeah, um, isn't it sweet? You know, we've been friends for almost 20 years, and yeah. she's one of the most dear people. In the, I mean, she is – what you see when you see her on a TV or, you know, any kind of interview, I mean, that's her. She's so consistent. She's one of the most consistent people I know. From the very first time I, I walked in her house, I started teaching her kids piano back in the early mm-hmm. 90s when Baby Baby was still hot and she was traveling like crazy. And um, But I, the first time I walked in her house, she went, oh, I forgot you were coming tonight. We're about to eat time. We're coming in the kitchen. Let me fix your plate. Oh, and I wow. went to the kitchen, and she fixed me a plate, and we sat and ate supper. It was so funny because, you know, I was so starstruck with her. I was like, you know, in my 20s. This and is I'm, Amy Grant. <laughs> yeah, this is Amy Grant. And, um, you know, I, by the, I was trying that real cool, though, like it was no big deal. And so by the time we got through dinner and I talked to kids, I had to call and cancel my other lessons. I was so exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> i got to go home. I'm so wiped out from that but um but she you know she was a part of a lot of these stories like when I found that when my little niece got killed I was you know she was part of that she was in my life at that point and I remember driving back to Nashville after I left the, you know from having the funeral and everything and I drove straight to her house because I was supposed to teach the kids that night and when I got there she was sitting by the pool and she had you know a little tray with some food and some drinks on it and she said hey come over here she said, you're not going to teach tonight. We're just going to sit here and we're going to talk about life and we're going to honor your niece. And, you know, and, and we just had the sweetest talk. I mean, I just Aww. cried and cried and she cried with mm-hmm. me. And, you know, she's just, she's really, she, she's a real sister to me and I, I love her dearly. And when they asked me about the forward, they said, hey, would you get to write it? I knew instantly she was supposed to do it. And so when I, I texted her, she was in Canada, actually. She fired right back within 30 seconds. But I would be honored to, you know, come see me tomorrow night. I'll be home and bring me some chapters. Oh, so, goodness gracious. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, Jeff, I could talk to you forever and ever. I mean, you are so amazing to speak with, and I love your stories. I mean, you leave that impression. I read that about you. It's been said many times. People love – I mean, Amy said it herself in her in the foreword of your book. And – um you are one amazing person. And I must – one more thing I want to touch on before okay. um, we wrap. Um, your CD, Under God, uh-huh. I got that also with the book on Saturday. And I must tell you, the song Under God, it mm. – it, oh, oh, my. <laughs> Only yeah. God, you know. Yeah. You yeah. are an incredible songwriter. Those words, every person in our great nation needs to hear this song. This, yeah. and we will be definitely be playing it to death on our shows. Oh, and great, on our great. But well, you know, I really want. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Precious. No, the album is just precious. It's beautifully written, and you know, as only you know how to do. <laughs> you definitely pick the right career and the right calling. Um, you know, it, as I listen to you talk throughout this interview, I have to share this with you. My son, he is 18. He just started college. Um, Uh this year and he's attending liberty university in in lynchburg virginia and he wants to be a worship leader Mm. he has loved music since he was six he's played the drums and he picked up the guitar about a year and a half ago he started writing some worship praise and worship music and he is pursuing his dreams and as i listen to you talk about you know how this is what you wanted to be when you grew up kind of thing my son has had this dream within him 
for many, many years. And to see him at Liberty now, being able to, you know, and how he's already changing in the short few weeks he's been there. It is yeah, incredible wow. what God's doing in his life already. Mm-hmm. And so I can't wait to see how he's going to use him to to go forward. You yeah. know, he may be writing for Lifeway one day. Who knows? That's right. That's right. You never know. That there was a best generation that's going to carry the torch. You know, they're you know, going to keep you it going. You don't ever know what. Well, his his ultimate goal, if if it's God's will, he and his best friend, his best friend wants to be a pastor and is attending, uh, taking undergraduate studies, you know, in another university and is going to transfer into Liberty. And they want to start a church together when they both graduate. Oh, so, that would be great. Yeah, so they are really, really stoked about the future. Also, they do, you know, they have a little musical duo. That they go and sing and play at churches and stuff. So he is, he, every chance he gets to pursue music and do something with music for God's glory, he does it. And mm-hmm. as a mom, I couldn't be more proud. I think, you know, that's the best we could hope for in terms of our children and, and what in pursuing their hopes and dreams, you know. That's right. And I love to tell them, too, you know, God's already gone ahead of you and made a way for you. He's already gone. The plans are set. All mm. you have to do is the next right thing, day to day, stay in this day, and do the do the, exactly what you sent him, lead, you know, leading you to do. And just know you don't have to worry. You don't have to panic. You don't have to think, oh, because mm-hmm. so many times in our world, everybody loves to go, well, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in ten years? Oh, yeah. I'm like, you know what? That is that is not what the Bible says. It doesn't say, you know, it, it doesn't say, you know, worry, worry, worry about, where, where, you know, what have I exactly. got to do to get to this place? God's got it already mapped out, and it just takes all the pressure off when you, I mean, that's why I love to tell kids that, because they think, I've got to accomplish this by the time I'm 25 or by the time I'm 30. <laughs> I'm like, no, you're going to accomplish exactly what the Lord wants you to do when you're seeking Him. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it takes that, all that stress off of you. That is beautifully said, and, you know, even as an adult, um, that really came to fruition for me when my boyfriend passed away because, I, you know, I really realized at that point in time that all I had was that moment I was in because mm-hmm. the magnitude and power of God, I said, you know, I just saw my boyfriend the night before, and for mm-hmm. him to take him in a moment's notice without warning, right. none of us are exempt from that. I mean, we all mm-hmm. have our moment, and so all we can do is cherish the moment we're in. and. Right. and be thankful for the moments that we're given and embrace them because mm-hmm. you never know and and so and and that's all that also goes without saying you know in terms of our loved ones and our friends you know um embrace them and love them because you know too many times we see we lose people unexpectedly right. and um you know and for some as we were saying earlier you have those regrets i wish i should have could have would have and then mm-hmm. others you know, are relieved that none of that was in the way at the end. So right. very powerful lesson. But, yeah, you're right. You can't worry about what's to come five years down the road. All you can do is focus on the moment you're in. Right. That's right. Yeah. And that was another, you know, just walking through the lifeway thing, really, you know, because, you know, when, I'm glad that, you know, it was, it was a blessing that he, it was only, a you know, a few weeks that I had to wait mm-hmm. and wonder. But even in that time, it was like the Lord just kept saying, you know what? You know how many times in your life, and you're you're I was you know I was forty six I guess, and um, he said you know how many times have you been without a roof over your head, a bed to sleep in, food to eat, clothes to wear? Why do you think I let you down now? Why do you think I'm? Mm. You think that my brain? You know we go to the worst. We I had myself like cleaning porta potties. I mean I, I was <laughs> thinking, well I guess I could you know go work at, you know what. <laughs> I well, you see know, myself behind the counter going, you won't fries with that. And I'm like, well, the Lord's going to as I sit here and listen to you share this, it's very funny uh, to most people hearing it. But to think about, you know, I, I wish I had known you that time. I would have said, are you crazy? You know, you're not going to be without a job. I mean, look at your resume. Go read your resume, for goodness sake. <laughs> and, and, and God <laughs> pulled you out of this. Uh, don't you think he's going to take you somewhere else? I mean, but it is, it, it, we've all been through it, seriously. That's I mean, our human nature. Our human it, nature just makes us look, go straight I to the through, bottom. I went and the Lord was like, job. you went straight to the bottom. You didn't even stop at working at the mall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. When God tells us to do something. Or he takes yeah. us out of a situation that we don't have a clue where we're headed next. That's when right. Satan loves to mess with us. He loves to come yeah. in and plant mm-hmm. those seeds out. Sometimes boulders, he bounces them off our heads, you know, to go, hey, yeah. this is the way it's going to mm-hmm. be. Don't see that guy, you know. And yeah. it's the same thing he was doing in the Garden of Eden, you know. Right. And mm-hmm. he's still doing it to this day. And, and right. we just have to 
remember that if God has pulled us out of something or he's mm-hmm. got a plan, and you're so right. I mean, but sometimes we have to go through those hard moments and those moments of uncertainty to appreciate the fact that God already, he already knows in advance. He's al- always right. ahead of us. So we don't ever need yeah. to worry where we're going to be led as long as we're following that's him and listening to his voice, you know. And if, yeah, and if God is for us, who can be against us? And that's one of the songs, too, that's, on there. That, if that's God right. is for me, who can be against me? You know, it's just one of the most powerful words. You just, mm-hmm. you release it and it just shifts the air, you know. Mm-hmm. You just feel mm-hmm. a shift in your spirit because it's just oil and it's healing to even say that over yourself. Jeff Slaughter, this has been an incredible time spent with you, and I, I could just talk to you for for hours and hours. Your stories, your funny, your humor, it just your candor, everything. Thank you so very much for spending your time with us this evening and and just uh, sharing your heart with us. It has been such oh, a blessing. Oh, thank you. It's been an honor for me, Don. You're amazing. I've been, I've just feel like I'm talking to an old friend, so I oh, really appreciate it. And a amazing. dear friend, I won't say an old friend, a dear, <laughs> a dear friend. <laughs> Love to have you back anytime, especially as each these new projects that you're working on as they come out, you know, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love to have you back to talk about anything, anytime, just to chat even. So uh, yeah. just let us know. We love it. Well, I appreciate that so much, so much. And thank you for your time. It's just, it's really been a blessing. So. Well, thank you. And have a great evening and God bless you in all that you continue to do. Thank you. You too. You too, friend. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Hi. If you're just a little late joining us, we have been speaking with Jeff Slaughter, and he is an amazing person, as you could tell. I mean, wow. Just a great interview. Really enjoyed speaking with him. And uh, to give you a little background, in case you missed it in the beginning, Jeff, was he's a popular singer and songwriter, and he has worked with everybody under the sun. Um, In fact, he's a multi-platinum recording artist and world-renowned worship leader who has worked with some of the biggest stars in country music, including, are you ready for this, Loretta Lynn, Conway Twitty, Kenny Rogers, Susie Buggis, and Faith Hill. And uh, he worked for uh, 16 years with a Lifeway Christian bookstores. He was uh, their composer for all of their Vacation Bible School's uh, most beloved songs. In fact, Lifeway officials have estimated that more than 46 million people throughout the world have sung Slaughter's songs. And if any of you have ever been involved with Bible school, if you went to Bible school as a kid, um, (laughs) cut your teeth on Bible school, and you sang songs, you can almost bet any and everything that you were singing songs that Jeff composed. But he has written a brand new book, which released um, this May. It's all true, Walking by Faith in a Funky World. And it was released on Skyhorse Publishing. And uh, you can pick that up just about anywhere. Um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, I mean, you name it, it is there. So, um If you want to check out more about Jeff, you can visit his website at jeffslaughter.com. You can also follow him on Twitter at Jeff underscore Slaughter, and you'll be able to keep up with him um, and all that he has upcoming because, as he said, he has several brand-new projects um, that he is currently working on and uh, should be ready for release early next year or late before the end of this year. So uh, we do look forward to that. And he is an incredible, incredible songwriter. And before we wrap, I want to play a song off of um, his album called Under God that is just uh, it's just very heartwarming. And it really is um, a real testament to our, our nation. I mean, it uh, not to slight our national anthem, but this song – could be our national anthem for sure. It it really truly encompasses what we're all about as a nation, and uh, and and most importantly that we are a nation under God, which is the way our forefa- forefathers set this nation up to be. And uh, you know, if it doesn't take much these days, if you are you know if you turn on the news and you see all the things that are going on in Washington, you know, even with the government shutdown looming tonight at midnight, being one of them, uh, one of the many. Um, 
it, it doesn't take long to see between that and also what's going on in society almost daily um, that, you know, it, it would seem that we're not a nation under God. But uh, Jeff's song really does kind of bring it back home and uh, and helps us to kind of really remember who we are as a nation and and who is in control. So without further ado, I want to play the title cut off of his album. This is Jeff Slaughter and Under God.
Wow. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Jeff Slaughter is a multi platinum recording artist and composer and that is why Lifeway Christian Bookstores wanted him composing their vacation Bible school materials for the last 16, 17 years. I mean, what an incredible talent. God-given talent on top of that. That song, um, when I first heard it, it, it just gave me chills as I was listening to it because the words are so powerful and uh, really do hold great meaning to what this nation is all about, what it stands for, and most importantly, that it is a nation under God. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Again, you can um, keep up with Jeff at jeffslaughter.com. You can also visit him on Twitter at jeff underscore slaughter and, uh, to be able to, to stay up on every Thing. And also um, to purchase his book, any new projects that he has coming out, um, you'll be able to find out. So we want to say a huge, very heartfelt thank you to Jeff for being our special guest this evening. And also thank you so much to all of you who joined us. And if you're brand new to our program, if this is your first time here, welcome aboard. We are always glad to have new listeners. So with that, I am going to close. But I want to say again, thank you so much. And uh, I hope you all have a great night, and we will be back here again very soon. Take care, all. Have a great evening. Good night.